I, one of my least favorite times when I was in the private sector was the time I had to uh, redo the insurance for my employees. So I want to kind of uh, step back a little bit and, and, and take an overview about this. Uh, and, and I'll start with uh, you, uh, Dr. Goodman. Uh, the way insurance works is they sell policies to uh, a bunch of people and hopefully the money that comes in from that covers the losses uh, uh, f for the people in that group. So it ends up the healthy people end up subsidizing the 52-year-old overweight uh, congressman with high blood pressure and a high-stress job. Is that basically how insurance works? Well, that is true in every market, but in most insurance markets, uh, the premium that is charged at the point of entry uh, reflects the expected cost then. Right. So it, what, what we had in Obamacare then uh, was the idea we have got a whole new market and the insurance companies are concerned uh, that they don't know how to price this and what the, what the actuarial risk is, how many unhealthy people versus healthy people. Is that an accurate statement of part of the problem? Yes, and we could be stronger than that. We, we have built perverse incentives into the structure of the market, and, and I think that is totally unnecessary. All right. So as a result of this, part of the deal that was struck in Obamacare is we put these risk corridors in so the taxpayers are potentially on the hook uh, in the event that uh, the, the loss ratio is out of whack. Is that that is a fair assessment of Obamacare in, in what we are talking about today. Sure. All right. So let me ask you a question. Uh, do The President has been under a lot of fire for uh, his statement, if you like your health insurance, you can keep it. And there have actually been some changes made to Obamacare as a result of that. And a as a result, the, the policy offerings have changed. Does that run up is that going to run up the cost potentially to insurance companies and increase the amount taxpayers may be uh, on the hook uh, under these corridors? Well, I think the way they have changed some of the rules of the game within the last month or so uh, has, has increased the riskiness uh, of, the, of the products in, in the market. All right. Now, uh, if, assuming you owned an insurance company, would you have jumped into Obamacare but for these uh, uh, risk corridors? I mean, would you have said, all right, I'm, uh, I'm out of the health insurance game, or this is too risky, or would you maybe have run your prices way up? Well, you've got to understand, I don't have a problem with a risk corridor. I, what I right. have a problem with are the poor design of the exchange, which is then going to put taxpayers at great risk. Uh, to pay for right. the, those design mistakes. It's not, not an insurance company okay. mistake, it's a design so, Mr. Mistake. Badger, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I, I again, as I, I do have concerns with the way risk orders work in this law, as as opposed to Part D, and particularly with the way CMS said they would work. Right, and that is to say that in order, because of the problems that are created for insurance companies, CMS is going to give them direct subsidies out of out of taxpayer funds, not out of revenues that come into. All right, the risk so let me, let me let, let, let's go to this scenario. So suppose we. Uh, we decide we are not going to do these cor corridors and we pull them out. The insurance companies are going to be on the hook uh, for these losses. Is there a way they are going to be able to reinvent their policies and stay in business? How do we get out of this without bankrupting the insurance companies and have no insurance market at all left and potentially end up with the government being the only uh, insurer of last resort? Well, that, that raises other questions about the law's design that um Dr. Goodman has raised, but I, I guess the principle I would like to lay out is this. If you can't make a profit without corporate welfare, you can't make a profit. And we should not be putting taxpayers in the position of having But weren't insurance companies making a profit before Obamacare? They, yeah, they are. And they may well make a profit in Obamacare, as CBO's announcement yesterday suggests that they will do very well. If they are paying $16 billion in and only taking $8 billion out of the risk carders, I don't think they are right about that. But if they are, CBO thinks they are going to make a profit. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Goodman. There is a better way of doing this. We call it uh, change of health status insurance. But, but the fundamental principle is that, that, that insurance pools don't get to dump their sick people on other insurance pools. And if we, if we would just follow that principle, the, the tax would be far less at risk than they are right now. And uh, you think this could be 
done as a tweak to uh, Obamacare somewhere in the I mean, how do we, we've got such a big, massive law, you know, we, we, we want to be, you know, our side, I think, wants to be done with it and start over. 